Liftechooks.com has the juice. We're looking for just a little bit more in the second fight. Yep, finding that kick. Like, he don't care. Like, Justin just wants, even if you check it, he just wants to land. He just wants to land those kicks. I would love, I would love to see his, the x-rays on his shins on how much calcium Justin Gaethje has actually grown. What's up, everybody? Henry Cejudo here, a.k.a. Triple C, you guys, welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback, where I'm going to be breaking down, that's right, Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje won. I happened to be there in that fight. It was here in Phoenix, Arizona, 2018, I believe. And I tell you what, guys, there's so much to go over, but this wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, Lifted Trucks, making customized trucks since 1995. Guys, you guys want to be the king of the jungle, you may be a short king like me, but if you guys want to be the king of the damn street, make sure to go to liftedtrucks.com and get your lift on. Again, guys, Justin Gaethje versus Dustin Poirier. One thing that I will say about this fight is Justin Gaethje, he has changed. Dustin Poirier, he's almost like the same guy. There has been some modifications, but anyhow, enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. So here we are, April of 2018, Dustin Poirier, number five at the time against number six, Justin Gaethje. They're both identical in the age, you know, at that at this time, 29, you know, a little height advantage, a two inch height advantage for Gaethje, you know, five, you know, same weight and just a little uh, reach advantage for Dustin Poirier. I was actually at this fight, so I actually had a chance to see this fight live, and uh, I remember it was the main it was the main event of the whole fight card, and it was uh, it was fireworks. I remember this fight like it was yesterday because it was such a good fight. Let's hit the play button. You know, you know, in the beginning, Justin was doing a really good job of really just investing in what he knows best, and that's kicking. Uh, Justin kicks super super hard. You know, again, winning, winning that, uh, winning, you know, defending with leg kicks, boom. It's almost like, you know, getting a kick from Justin Gaethje is like having a bat. Cause he'll just throw, it's not the most, uh, it's not the nicest kick, but it's a kick that will hit, land and hit you. And it's, it's very violent, you know? And uh, keep in mind too, like we're only like two, like, you know, three minutes down and look at, look, you know, this fight has, this fight has just gone like, you know, Justin Gaethje's face is already red. But these are these are some of the things that I will say with Justin that he's got to be careful is this right here. And I hope, you know, he'll still do it every once in a while. But this was back in 2018 where I think he's, you know, has has been able to kind of, you know, develop a lot more skill. And then look at Justin. Justin. Justin's forced to bring the fight super close to Justin. Dustin is super, has is forced to bring the fight super close to Justin Gaethje because he doesn't have these damn kicks coming. You know what I'm saying? So he's literally in boxing range. Like 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 Dustin Poirier is, is is now really welcoming Justin Gaethje because of that first round. How much he threw those kicks? Yeah, Justin's uh, covering up. You know, but still throwing those leg kicks. Like, I, I, again, Justin, right now, there's there's no move because he's here and he's so he's so stuck on throwing power with the leg kicks. And at this point, going into round two, like, you know, Dustin Poirier says, "Hey, I, I got to continue the game plan that's coming. That's taking everything forward. That's taking t taking away Justin Gaethje's leg kicks means you got to take his distance away. And in this instance, he's pressing him. He's pressing him. He'll take a kick." So he would have come and take a punch, but again, when you're hurt through the foundation, you're forced to fight with the hands. And this is and this is what Dustin wanted the whole time. And I don't even think uh, Gaethje really knew what. Uh, and this is the, again, guys, we're in the, we're in round. This is only round two. But again, yep, yep. And this is one area where I do feel like Justin does a really good job. Yeah, unnecessary, but. That's Justin. 
I love the fact that he still finds, he'll still look for that kick even up the middle. Watch. He'll, st he'll still throw the, he'll throw, he'll, st uh, Justin will still throw a kick when he's in this position, like, boom, right there. Like, he knows that, he, he knows that if he takes this out, that, that he'll be all right with the rest. And then, boom, comes with the, comes with the flip. Yeah, nice right hand by Justin. Had him going backwards, look at this, countered, boom. It was actually uh, it was actually a, uh, a right hook. Can we see that once again? Right here, look. The counter with the right boom with the right hook. So that's probably things we're going to be looking looking for just a little bit more in the second fight. Yep, finding that kick. Like he don't care. Like Justin just want even if you check it, he just wants to land. He just wants to land those kicks. I would love I would love to see his the X-rays on his shins on how much calcium Justin Gaethje has actually grown. Or is it that Dustin had his success? It was with the pressure. It was with the pressure and the heavy, heavy left, right hands, like, like you know what I'm saying? That's that's where he, he found success. It's, look, look, at, look at Dustin's composure too as he's throwing. Like he's not panicked, like he's not over moving. He's right in your face. And then he's just throwing uppercuts, left hook, right hands. Boom. Finding everything for Justin Gaethje, but to be able to pretty much stop him. Again, I do feel like Justin Gaethje has changed quite a bit when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, you know, him controlling his violence, his, his kicks or whatnot. But Dustin Poirier did a really good job of just being in his face and then bringing the fight to him with heavy power and heavy hands. And for the for as much power as Justin Gaethje loves to throw, I mean, you eventually do get tired. That's a lot of pow power that you're throwing. It only takes a couple, a, a, a couple right hands to really kind of start just fatiguing your whole body as a whole. But without further ado, I would like to get to the keys of how is it that I feel that more likely Justin Gaethje needs to do to win the second rematch. So the keys to Justin Gaethje. Ah, the keys to Justin Gaethje, because I was there for that first fight. And it's gonna be continue. Continue. Anyways, you guys get what I'm saying. Continue kicking. I think the kicking game is where it's at. But the key to that kicking game for Justin Gaethje is the second key is his defense. He's gonna have to figure something out rather than uh, rather than him just bringing his hands up and and staying in this pocket. If you're gonna do that, create a little more space, cre create a little more space to be able to get out to start looking for things like that. So continue kicking and defensively protect yourself. You know, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to find this, Justin. You're gonna have to find this, uh, this defense where you're gonna be able to defend him while you're kicking, or if he is punching at you, you uh, you can't have him. You, you you can't just block. If you are, you probably just have to create the fight and actually take a chance, like you did with that right hook, where you where you actually hurt him. So again, I'd say continue kicking. Def your defense should be number two, or maybe number one should be your defense. Number two, continue to keep kicking, and number three is control that control. Control that, control that violence. I think that's one thing that if, if I could literally say that Justin's just gotten good in, in all areas, and particularly now he's using more of his wrestling. He's, uh, he's, you know, he's gotten better defensively. His striking has actually gotten better too. He's been able to level change a lot with his, with the striking. 
Um, but if, if he's able to control some of that violence, when I say violence is some of that power, if he's able to control some of that five for some of that power for five rounds, I think he'll be good. I think he'll be good. So, so sometimes you gotta you gotta you gotta tame you, some people. You gotta tell him to go more, but with Justin Gaethje, you really gotta tell him to control that violence. You know, be be very particular with it that you're actually gonna kick. You know, save some of that power because I was there in that fight. And the only reason why Justin Gaethje really lost is because he really drained the battery. He gave everything that he had. And it was going into the fourth or fifth round. I, I don't recall. But anyways, he, you know, obviously uh, Dustin did hurt him. But it was really the fact that he needs to control his body. He needs to control some of that power. So again, number one, you know, con uh, continue to keep kicking. Continue to keep kicking um, uh, Dustin Poirier because the first time it was working. Conor McGregor did the same thing. Michael Chandler did the same thing. You know, uh, Dustin Poirier is very uh, hand heavy. So for that reason, you know, the game is still there. You continue to keep doing that. But while as you continue to keep doing that, you have to, you have to be defensively sound. You, you know, you, you can't give a kick to take a punch. You know, you have to figure something out. Justin, there's ways where you're going to do that. Obviously, you do this very well. When you go over and kick, you will cover. But um, when I mean more of, more of the, you do that very well, but I'm saying more defensively is you cannot you cannot be close to uh, Dustin Poirier. That's, you, you know what I mean? Like, don't let him take away that kick from you. And if you are close, you got to let those hands go. But either way, you have to, you have to be really good defensively against a Dustin Poirier. And number three, control the violence. Control your threshold. Don't be so eager to, you know, throw out the kitchen sink in the first round. You're more likely with, with the guy Dustin Poirier, if you don't stop him with a submission, you're going to go five rounds with the diamond. And without further ado now, as I would like to, you know, obviously I got to be fair to everybody, right? I can't just, even though, you know, Justin Gaethje's my friend, I got to, you know, keys to Dustin Poirier. Keys to Dustin Poirier is close, close the distance. Close the distance like he was. If he's able to close the distance, he takes away the leg kick. You know, he gets, he gets, he gets, he gets Justin Gaethje backpedaling like he did in the first fight. And, you know, he's able to kind of unleash his wrath. You know, one thing I will say though, is Gaethje's been wrestling a lot more. So you have to close the distance in a very smart way. We are not smothering either. You know, closing the distance. Really, it's using using the hands. Even though this is something that he already does, is using the hands with Justin. You know, you you, you gotta make you gotta make this fight into a boxing fight like you did the first time. You know, you, you, you pretty much do the, you know, you, you fight the way that you fought Conor McGregor. You know, you fight you fight the same way you fought Conor McGregor, and for, and you've been really successful. And I think that's what's made you. You know, one of the toughest and most durable fighters in the UFC is the fact that, man, Dustin Poirier has an endurance. He has a gas tank with the heavy hands that he has. Number three. Dustin Poirier, he's got a, Dustin Poirier's got a ground game. You know, I would have two game plans. I would have a game plan to strike, and then I would follow another game plan if that's not working, to maybe look, look to wrestle, you know, look to maybe put Justin on his back. You know, you watch a lot of his other takes, man. He's he struggled while being on his back, whether he was with Oliveira or he was with Khabib, but he, I, I, again, but he did get better. So again, breaking down the keys for Dustin Poirier is close the distance. Close the distance, you close the distance, you take away the leg kick, right? Uh, use your hands. I mean, I think, uh, I know as simple and as crazy as that sounds, I think we all know it. I mean, this is where it's at for you. You got a box. 
you got a box and you got a dirty box. And then three, if none of this other stuff is working, you got good ground game, man. You got good, you got good top control, you're a black belt. You know, that's what makes you unique is come up with the second game plan. And I think that would be, uh, you know, the ground game. But without further ado, my final thoughts on Poirier versus Justin Gaethje. I mean, guys, if there's anybody that that has evolved, and if you guys notice too, the, you know, we got the, we got the BMF belt here, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's up for grabs too. The baddest mother effer. You know, if there's anybody out of all out of these two that has probably made those adjustments, you know, I'm gonna have to say Justin Gaethje. It's not just because I know him. It's because it's facts. He's fought a lot more competition as of lately, and he's been able to tame some of that power. You know, you're starting to see a lot more of that wrestling coming in, like he used against uh, um, against uh, what he used against Michael Chandler, and even him, you know, um, controlling that violence as he did in his last fight with uh, with F with Fiziev or Fizev. You know, with Rafael Fiziev, I think that says a lot about. And he outstruck him. And I think a fight like that has also prepared Justin Gaethje for a fight like that against Dustin Poirier. Because with all due respect, I do think and I do feel that Rafael Fiziev has the, had the best striking at 155 pounds. Until this man kind of exposed him and showed him another street side of a style of striking in a guy like Justin Gaethje. So for that reason, my final thoughts, who is it that I think is more likely gonna win? I'm gonna have to give it to none other than the highlight. You know, the highlight, the highlight, I'm giving you the crown, man. I'm giving you the crown. And I'll give you a crown and a gold medal. How about that? You know, since, you know, maybe let's make it silver, you know, since I'm a silver medalist now. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? But I just, I do feel like Justin Gaethje has made those improvements. And, you know, and if he's able to surprise um, Dustin Poirier with some of that wrestling and be able to, if he is hurt, to be able to use some of that or control the runs at the very end, I think I think it could be a really, I think it could be a, a, a much easier fight for Justin than it would be for a guy like Poirier, even though he has that victory because this man has made those adjustments. So there you have it, guys. That is my breakdown of the rematch, Poirier versus Gaethje. Guys, this wouldn't be possible without our sponsor. That's right, Lifted Trucks. You guys make sure you go get your custom truck at liftedtrucks.com to get your lift on. Guys, they've been making custom trucks since 1995, and then right now they're at the top of the market. I have a lifted trucks. I may be a short king, but I have a lifted trucks in my driveway right now where I am the king of the damn street. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, aka Triple C. And thank you guys for watching Five Feedback. And we will be back next week. And we are out.